Hi, I'm Flower with Big Dipper Waxworks. We've been making beeswax candles for over 20 years, and I'm so excited to partner with Brambleberry in order to show you how you can make beeswax candles at home. I love making beeswax candles. Beeswax is the most, most natural of all waxes. It comes from the sustainable industry of honey farming. It's naturally aromatic, it's so beautiful, and the spectrum of light that comes off of a beeswax candle is like that of the sun rather than an incandescent light. Beeswax has a naturally high melting temperature, so it tends to burn a lot longer. It's also more aromatic in the yellow form rather than the white form, but ultimately it's your personal preference as to which one you'd prefer to use. There are so many different shapes and styles to choose from when making candles. You can make taper candles, but we're not going to make those today. You need a lot of equipment and a really, really deep container and a lot of beeswax in order to make these. You can make pillar candles. Again, you need a lot of equipment in order to make these. Or you can make container candles. There's a variety of different containers and vessels that you can use, and it's a great choice for beginners. The first decision that you need to make is what kind of a container you want to use. So there's a lot of really good options out there, but there's also some poor choices. Poor choices might be something that's really tall and narrow at the top. This first of all is going to be really hard to get a wick down into, but also it's going to blacken over time as it burns, not to mention trying to get a match down in there. Might be a little difficult. This is a really cute goblet, but first of all, topsy-turvy. And second of all, plastic. You don't necessarily want to burn a candle in plastic. And same with this. Tall, really pretty, it would illuminate and be beautiful, but you won't be able to light it and it just won't burn well. These are all excellent options. They all have a wider mouth, they're heat safe, and most of them are under three inches in diameter. You want to start to look at the diameter because once you get into wick choices, the wider that you go, in particular with beeswax, the harder that you're going to be able to choose a wick that might consume all the fuel. Today we're going to be working with some of the containers that are available from Brambleberry.com. There's a variety of different wicks to choose from. These are all cotton core braided wicks and they're braided in different ways. So you'll see that this is like a flat wick and this would be a flat braid. There's also square braided wicks that will be a little bit thicker. The thicker that the wick is and the more fibers that are knit into it, the wider the diameter of the candle that it will burn. There's also these really cool wood wicks available. My biggest suggestion is to just test and test and test. So there will be suggestions for you on brambleberry.com for what wicks to use. But oftentimes, you might need to test a few varieties to get a perfect burning candle. So because beeswax is such a precious resource, you really want to consume all of it in the candle. That's why your wick choice is so important. As you'll see in this candle, it hasn't burned all the way out to the edges. And so that's not going to consume all of the fuel. So not the best wick choice. These candles look like they're going to consume all of the wax. You can see it's totally melting down. There's no residue along the sides. That's a perfect burning candle. You might look at this container though. It got a little dark around the top and we don't necessarily want that and it got quite hot at the bottom as I was burning it. So that's not something that you want either. You can notice as you blow out your candles they'll crack down the center. That's a sure sign that you have maybe too big of a wick. Okay, so let's talk about our wick options. These are signs of what you don't really want your wicks to burn. Um, these are really, really hot. You can tell these have only been lit about an hour and a half and they all have pretty significant um, molten pools. So as you see, I put these on some tin lids because they were so hot I couldn't move them. Um, this might burn a table. It, this one's smoking. It's starting to leave a little bit of darkness and some carbon deposit around the top. I just think that this is really, really a dangerous wick. And so I would almost um, go towards the other side and use something that potentially leaves a little bit of wax. And with this candle, you'll see that perhaps the wick 
isn't big enough. So you'll see that there's a big like ring of wax around the edge. You don't want that, first of all, because it's wasting fuel. But second of all, as it burns down, it's going to kind of continue to tunnel down. It potentially will put itself out, but it's going to leave a lot of your precious resource behind. And then for me, these are just right. So there's a little bit of wax that's kind of um, grouped up around the edges. We've got a nice bright flame. There's not a lot of carbon deposit down in the pool of wax. So I think that as these flames kind of start to move down even further, it's going to consume any of this wax that's along the edges of the glass. And you're gonna have a really nice, long burning, um, clean candle. Now that we've covered all the basics, it's time to make some candles. First of all, we covered our surface with some paper because beeswax candle making can be a little bit of a mess. Second, we've got some supplies here. This is just a basic double boiler system. You can use any pot um, that's kind of deep because you'll want to put either another pot that hovers above it or you can place something down in it. I really like this. This is what we use at our factory. This is just a simple pouring pot. It's nice because you can melt it in here and it also has a handle that is heat resistant. Today we'll use this because I know that everybody has one of these bowls and one of these pots at home. There's a few inches of water in here. We've brought it up to a steam and I'm just gonna place this bowl over the top and then I'm gonna add my beeswax. This is about two pounds of beeswax that we're putting into our pot. Beeswax can be a little tricky to clean, so it's really good to just dedicate a few pots to this craft. The double boiler system is an excellent method to melt down your beeswax. First of all, it's slow and low. The water prevents the wax from burning, um, which is super great. Plus, most people have these materials in their house. This is an excellent way to prevent your wax from scorching. You want to watch the water and make sure that it doesn't get into the wax. So my general rule of thumb is to just kind of have it at a really like soft, gentle boil rather than a big roaring boil. That way it prevents the water from getting into the wax and also prevents you from scorching your wax. Wax will scorch at about 200 degrees or above 200 degrees and this will cause for unsightly wax and sometimes it just doesn't burn as well. Another melting option is a crock pot or like this little baby fryer. The only thing that you really want to watch with these is because warm is just under 200 degrees, you'll want to make sure that this doesn't get turned on and just left. You want to watch your wax and once it's melted, immediately begin pouring it. All right, so now that we have our wax in our pot, it's just a waiting game. But I would recommend not walking off too far because this really needs to be tended to to make sure that it doesn't get too hot or the water doesn't boil over or any other things that might happen. All right, our wax has been going for about 15 minutes and I'm just giving it a little stir to evenly distribute the heat. Looks like it'll take another 15 minutes or so. Okay, looks like our wax is done. We're gonna remove it from the heat. Okay, so our wax is really warm and not ready to pour. We wanna bring it down to about 155 to 160 degrees. We'll add the essential oils before that, but I'd like it to cool a little bit more before we add the essential oils. If you add the essential oils when the wax is really warm, they'll start to burn off and dissipate more. Um, so we're just gonna let this cool down a little bit and we'll start wicking our containers in the meantime. And the same applies for fragrance oil. You want to let the wax cool down before you add any of those. Okay, so we have a variety of diameters of jars here to choose from. We're going to use different wicks for them. So in this really large jar, this looks like it's about three and a half to four inches wide, we're gonna use a substantial wick. So this is quite a bit thicker than the other wicks. I prefer trimming my wicks. So I'll just hold it up next to the jar and then trim it at the height of the jar. And so once I have that done, you can do this a few different ways. You can either pour the wax into the containers and then go through and add the wicks afterwards. I actually prefer to do it a little bit of a different way. I like to use glue dots. And so I'll just take a glue dot and I'll put it on the bottom of the wick. And then I'll 
put it down into the jar. So this does a few things. Not only does it fix it in center so that you don't have to worry about it later, it also prevents the wick from sliding around on the bottom of the jar. So if you do have a jar that's like slightly rounded up, it's already fixed in the center and it won't slide towards the wall once the wax gets down to the very bottom. This also allows the candle to stay in the container after it's poured because beeswax tends to contract when it's poured at a nice cool temperature. So as I mentioned, you want to pour beeswax at a pretty cool temperature between 155 and 160 degrees. We'll go ahead and add our essential oils now. The wax is at about 165 degrees right now, so we won't pour it quite yet, but we'll add these. And you'll see that as we add the essential oils, they kind of coagulate into the wax. Just give it a little stir and start to allow those to disperse into the wax. So I added lavender 4042 to this. I love lavender. It's got really calming properties and it makes a really nice candle. To kind of expedite our process, I'm going to take some of this wax and put it into a smaller container. That way this will cool a little bit quicker. This will continue to stay warm. Okay, so you'll see that the wax is starting to slightly harden over on the top. This is a sign that this is pretty much at the perfect temperature to start pouring. You'll want to torch this off or warm the surface of this before pouring because it will, um, as you pour it in, it will kind of get little chunks and have some air bubbles at the top. So I have a creme brulee torch. You can also put this back into your double boiler. So now that our wax is ready to go, I'm going to pour it into our containers. You want to pour pretty consistently. Um, you really don't want to double pour. So you get one shot at this. I'll do our first container, our largest container first. After I'm done pouring, I'll just gently nudge the wick to center. And we made our first candle. All right, and we'll move on to our other containers. Slow, steady stream. And then fix your wick. Slow, steady stream. And then fix your wick. And with these last two, I'll show you how you can just pour into the container. and then place your wick. So because I'm pouring at a nice cool temperature, when I add the wick into it, it stays right in the center exactly where I want it to be. So I'll put that in. And so I'm not going to top this off, even though it's poured just a little short, because beeswax does contract, as I explained. So as you'll see, these are in all different stages of starting to cure and dry. So usually I don't like to move things when they're molten or you can see hot wax. I'll, so I'll just let them sit until they get to, totally firmed over. Once they get firmed over, if it's okay for your hands, you can start to move them around. They'll dry completely. It, really, it depends on the ambient temperature of your home. Um, but anywhere from like an hour and a half to three hours completely. After that, they're good to go. You can light them up, uh, you can give them as gifts. And I find that essential oils tend to cure over time. So your candle might smell like something today, but in four days time, the essential oils in particular will start to kind of synergize and maybe smell a little bit different. So things change over time, but beeswax candles will be good forever. So you can pour them today and give them as gifts a year from now. Ultimately, if you're making candles at home, you should have fun. It's not about how they look. It's about how much fun you have. 
but if you want to make picture perfect candles, just a few things to look at. So something like this that cracks in the top, that's a sure sign that you maybe poured it a little bit more on the hot side. So you really want to focus on kind of that sheen that you get over the top of the wax before you pour it. And once it gets to that temperature, about 157 degrees or so, you know that your wax is ready to go. So that's kind of what happened here. Also, do you notice this dark color? This is actually from patchouli essential oil. So just know that any additives that you're putting into your beeswax can affect the overall color. This one, again, this weird little hole in the top that just got uh, poured a little bit too hot. And then also, do you see this ridge along the outside of it? This is a double pour. And so we poured a little bit of wax into the glass and we ran out. And so we had to pour a little bit more to top it off. And so that's kind of what that looks like. Again, this is for your own consumption. Who cares what it looks like? It's going to burn great still. And then this has a big, deep crack. And so again, it got poured a little bit too hot. But also, you'll kind of see these ridges along the outside of it. Not terrible, but this is just, it looks like a product of maybe pouring really, really slow. So most inconsistencies in your beeswax candles and the way that they look is a result of temperature. So it's either the temperature of the wax, the temperature of the room, or maybe even the temperature of the container. We pour most of our candles at room temperature and that can vary and we have pretty good success. But I have found that if the temperature of the room is really cold and you're putting hot wax into a colder vessel, that your results might be a little bit different than on a warm day. So as I mentioned, having a creme brulee torch on hand is a really, really useful tool, especially if you have some of these cracks. If it's really deep, you might not be able to fix it, but something like this looks like I could probably fix it just by turning this on and going pretty slow and lightly at the top of it and just starting to gently warm it up. And you can start to fill in your crack a little bit like that. So you might need to have to go at it a few times. As I mentioned earlier, you don't necessarily want to double pour your wax, but you can. It's not going to be a picture perfect surface, but if you have a little bit of extra wax and you can top that off, you can also do that. And for those of you who maybe let your wax cool a little bit too much, it just becomes a time management thing. You have to keep putting the wax in and getting it warm and then pulling it out and getting it cool again. So that's where I really recommend a creme brulee torch. It also can be a little bit of a mess when you start to pour too cool because as I mentioned, little chunks can kind of fly out and um, create a little splash in your candle and then you've got beeswax all over the place and the surface of your candle might not be perfect, but things like that can also get torched down. Okay, so now that we've poured the majority of our wax, we have to clean up. There's a little bit of wax left in here and I didn't have a container left to pour it into. So what I would suggest is putting it back into a pot of hot water, just like this, and letting that wax get molten. And so once it's molten, you can just take a paper towel and wipe it out and kind of keep going back and forth until your Pyrex cup is pretty clean. And so the same goes for this pot, is you can just put it back on the hot water and get it nice and warm and wipe it out. There's also another option, and this is something that you can do with uh, candles that have a little bit of wax left over in them, you can actually put them in the freezer and this will create, um, this will make the wax really, really kind of like brittle and cold and then it will just pop right out. From there, you can start to wash this stuff with warm soapy water and get the majority of this pretty well cleaned up. I hope that this has given you the confidence to make beeswax candles at home. It's really fun and fulfilling. <laughs> if you like this video, Feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Brambleberry YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and thanks to Brambleberry for having me. Look at the eyebrows. It gave me like very light eyebrows. Yeah. Now I'm confident. Yeah. No. Hi everybody, I'm Flower. Sure. Okay. Feel free to go to the YouTube Bramble Note. Not doing that. And subscribe to the Brambleberry YouTube channel for more 
handle videos by experts, <laughs> not that. <laughs> and I'm so excited to be partnering with Brambleberry. <laughs> <laughs> just like that again. Perfect. All right, just like that. <laughs> We're gonna be here all day.